Next question is from Paula Angela. How can I better maintain a tight core for a whole set when doing bent over movements? Oh, Adam knows this. He does a lot of bent over <laughs> tight core. Oh, that's, that's, he I'm loves sorry. Like, all the exercises. Go with this right sorry, sorry. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I had to throw that in there. Yeah. No, you know what? The, you know what's uh, important about this is the, you might think, why would you need your core to be tight when you're bent over? Because the stabilization is coming from your low back. But what happens often to some, for some people is they overarch yep. and they start to get this shearing pain in the low back. The bracing the other side of the core stabilizes the whole thing. It's like wearing a weight belt. So what I used to tell my client, because naturally sometimes what happens, especially if you're not connected to your core, you'll do a bent over barbell row and you'll feel your belly hang yeah. and then you're just feeling a low back. Here's what you got. This is an easy one. I used to go up to my clients and I would poke them in the stomach yeah. and I'd mm -hmm. say, brace like you're, like, you're, like you're just trying to pr avoid getting poked or tickled or whatever. That's all. Yeah. Just brace your core. Yeah, and this is one of those things where you start getting into the movement and mechanics of an exercise and you just forget one of the parts. Like, so That's initially right. you might have that bracing effect, but then you start getting into the movement. Now I'm concentrating what my arms are doing. Yeah. I'm trying to really hone in on bringing my shoulders back and getting all that in check. And then you just, it, it, it's just inevitable. Some Sometimes like you just forget how important and vital it is to keep bracing that entire time you have to stay in that that tension uh to be able to protect your back so uh, you know just to just slow down is, is a big part of that is to to kind of bring the tempo down really like hone in on that yep. especially if you're getting that signal that there's a pain there that you're uh you're getting from your back so i i know we uh we we rag on each other about how bad of trainers we were when we first started yeah. and i was a bad trainer when i first started one of the things though i thought i did pretty well was i i learned the core was like the first thing i learned as a trainer and i was like so fascinated like up until that point i had no idea i used your pitch like a million times yeah right with, so, with the pencil yes right that was <laughs> yeah. seriously like that was that was my sales pitch Here, that, here's the pencil yeah, yeah no, here's the tight core yeah right and i I was fascinated with it. I was fascinated with it. And I remember telling people, you know, the most important muscle in your entire body besides your heart is your core. Yeah. And we, of course, without your heart, you're dead. We know that. But your core is the next, You got to right? memorize that. Oh, yeah. No, I used to go. And like Justin said, I had this whole pencil thing that I used to do and everything. Uh, this is actually where I love doing like stability type stuff because it's really hard to stabilize on one leg in balance without having to activate the core and stabilize the spine. Yeah. So if I have a client that struggles with keeping their core activated while they do bent over exercises, I might do a lot of single leg or stability type challenging movements. Physio balls. Good yeah. That's for this. right. So I get them to focus on that. We also had a question on a, on a live quad just recently um, and that we were talking to this girl. I forgot her condition that she had. It was very foreign to me. I've never heard it before. But the one that had the, the leak in her spine for her. Oh, her yeah, yeah. No, it was a pretty rare thing. Right. It was really rare. But we one of the things that we were trying to tell her was like, you know, a lot of times we don't think about movements as practice. We always think about as building muscle or burning body fat and getting the burn and intensity. And I was really big at the very beginning of, of coaching and training on like getting my clients to like just be super meticulous about their form. Mm -hmm. And so instead of being hung up when you're doing a bent over row and exercise about how much weight are you moving and yeah. trying to progress trying that. Trying to get through the reps. That's right. Try and make it look beautiful. If, you're, if your form looks beautiful, I guarantee the, the core is going to be activated because that's part of it. Part of keeping that spine in a very rigid position in a bent over exercise is the core having to activate. So if you look at the exercise as more of a movement and a skill and you challenge yourself to perfect the form mm -hmm. versus trying to always progress weight or reps, this will come along for the ride. So just look at it like that and try and make it. And, as soon, and so what I would do with a client, let's say, and we're doing, let's use a bit over row as an example. And, you know, we're doing the weight in about seventh or eighth rep. I see form break down, even though they could finish all 12 reps, I would reduce the weight and then challenge the ticket. I'd slow the tempo down and they'd be like, oh no, no, I could do it. This isn't too heavy. I'm like, no, no, your form is breaking down. It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. I want it to look perfect all the way through 12 reps. So just challenge yourself that way. You know, I, I, I tricked my daughter into uh, working on her core because I was trying to get them to exercise. It's a big pain in the ass, right? So I said, I'll tell you what, if you can sit on the physio ball without your feet touching the floor for one minute, I'll give you $5. So she's sitting on there with her legs trying to whatever. And it took a while for her to get it down. But then when she was done, I gave her five bucks and then she goes, 
did you just trick me into working my core? Because I feel <laughs> and I said I definitely did. Well, that's where yeah. the uh, you know one of our videos that's gone viral is the the split stance bicep curl yeah. video that I teach. And there, of course, I get a lot of shit from. There's a lot of guys on there. It that doesn't are, maximize your bicep oh, activation. Yeah, they're talking, that's not the point. Dude. Yeah, the point for that movement was I was I, I always had a hard time teaching some clients to to keep their elbows in position and to stand up with good posture. And I realized when I made them balance on one foot, they would have to. You would, and if you'll ever do this one time, you know, stand on one leg and balance. You'll notice in order to stabilize and balance, you stack the joints real nicely, and the core you'll just slight, you'll feel it. And I would do that. I'd say balance on one leg, and then I'd say, do you feel your stomach right now? Do you feel how you have slightly drawn in? You've just activated your core, your car, your, and then I'd go on the spiel. Justin's talking about with the pencil. Yep. Say it's five thirty up. sessions. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 